Till now, in nearly all my projects, I was working with breadboard prototypes. Once or twice, I was soldering components onto generic prototype PCB. It is time for the next step, design and order a custom PCB for one of my projects. I picked the project in which I control 7-digit display with shift register. Here's the schematic for this, and that's how it looked connected on the breadboard. When designing the PCB, my weapon of choice would be fritzing, Using this software, we'll convert breadboard prototype into printed circuit board like this. Well, maybe not that complicated, but not as simple as this one. It will be something right in between. Let's give it a go. When I started working with Fritzing, it was 100% free. I guess it still is, but on the main Fritzing page, when downloading the software, you are asked to donate a small fee so the software can be further developed and maintained. You still can find plenty of links on GitHub and other sites like this one, where you can download the software for free. When you try it and find it useful, I strongly encourage you to pay that little fee on the Fritzing webpage. The software is definitely worth it and there you always find the most up-to-date version. After you download zip file, all you need to do is unpack it into a folder. There is no installation per such, no registration. After unzipping the archive, you are pretty much ready to go. Let's start the application. Here is the application main window. When we start the new project, we are taken to the breadboard view. On the right side of the screen, you have two useful panels. The first one is a parts panel. Here you will find all sorts of predefined components. You have a tab with large number of core components. Then you have a tab for components that you either created yourself which is possible with Fritzing software, or components that were imported into the software and are not part of the standard. When you're missing a part you require, in 99% of cases you will find that part in the internet. You also have other tabs, e.g. one with different Arduino boards, Adafruit components, etc. Then you have inspector panel. When you double click on a component you get additional options to configure it. So for instance here, we clicked on a breadboard and we can change the type of the breadboard, we will pick the smaller one. So let's create the most simple design with common cathode RGB LED connected through current limiting resistors to Arduino Nano. You will notice that placing components and wiring them has a look and feel of working with real breadboard and real components. We are done. The cool thing here is that you can select any node and the software is going to highlight all other nodes this node is connected to. It is easy to double check all the connections, spot any errors. So currently we were working in a breadboard tab. You will notice that you have two more tabs. Let's go to schematic one. Here you can see a schematic view of the circuit. The software shows you all the parts and connections. The connections for now are shown with dotted lines, called ratness lines. They show you which connections you have to establish. Let's tidy up all the connections to end up with a proper schematic. You can create the design either in breadboard view or schematic view. It is your choice. Done. Let's now move to PCB view. Here we can create a design of the actual circuit board. You can see the components put randomly on rectangular shape. You see their actual physical footprints with information how they should look like on a PCB, with actual dimensions, required holes, etc. Here you also have ratness lines that will make sure you are not going to miss any connections that were defined in the breadboard view. Any changes you make in either the breadboard view or design view get reflected in the PCB view. To start, we'll use Inspector to change the size of the printed circuit board. Let's arrange all the components on the board. The board has two layers, top and bottom layer. When ordering the PCB, you have an option of ordering even more layers, but I'll stick just to two layer boards. At the bottom of the screen, you have an option to toggle between top layer view, bottom layer view, or you can choose to see both. So now we are going to lay our first track in the top layer. Tracks in the top layer are in yellow. We can make few more connections in the top layer. When we lay the track, the ratness lines associated with that track disappear. Now let's switch to the bottom layer and make few connections there. 
Tracks in bottom layer are in orange. Sometimes you're running into the situation that is impossible to connect two nodes without tracks crossing. Then we can use vias. A via is a plated through hole in the PCB that you can use to route a track from top layer to the bottom layer. In this example we are laying the first half of the connection in the top layer. It crosses the existing connection, but since the connection is in the bottom layer, there is no conflict. Then VIA takes us to the bottom layer, and there we do the other half of the connection. Here the connection cross as well, but again they are in a different layers, so we are okay. So those are basic rules of laying the tracks. Let's again look at using the inspector. So far we used it to choose breadboard type and PCB board size. Here we can also for instance change the type of the resistor from the classic one to the SMD one. Actually we can choose from large variety of SMD types. SMD components do not require holes through the PCB. I have never soldered SMD components. This is something for me to learn in the future. Now let's look at the RGB LED. You can see that we can change it to a common anode or even change the pin order of LED. Now, knowing the basic rules, we can finally start working on the printed circuit board for the seven segment display controlled by shift register. I will use three components, the display, the shift register, and the six header pins that will allow me to connect the PCB to Arduino. So we connect VCC, ground, overflow pin, clock pin, latch pin, data pin and then through eight current limiting resistors we are connecting decimal point and all seven segments. Let's have a quick look at the schematic. I'm going to leave it as is and move straight to the PCB view. We have all components randomly placed and the whole web of rat's nest wires. Let's place main components on the board and arrange resistors in a way that the laying of the tracks would be as easy as possible. Whenever it makes sense, I would rotate the resistors so that the rat's nest lines do not cross unnecessarily. This design is very simple, so rather than laying the tracks myself, I will use autoroad option. For larger projects, this is probably not recommended. After the tracks are created, you have a check option to discover any conflicts, and there are often some. Some are more and some are less obvious. To resolve the conflicts, you select item on the list and it highlights problematic parts and connections on the board. When you resolve all the issues, you can repeat the check. You can have multiple iterations until finally you get this pop-up message indicating that everything is 100% ok. And we can use this design to order printed circuit boards. Well, maybe not just yet. Few things to do before we do it. First, let's tidy up all the labels by properly positioning them. Then we can do last check if all the pins are properly connected in the same way we perform a check in the breadboard view. By selecting the pin, application shows us this pin connectivity. So let's see if all the segments are properly connected. Just realize that I did not capture the test for E segment and decimal point. You would have to take my word for it that it works. Then we check the ground, VCC, serial out pin, latch pin, clock pin and finally data input pin. Next we can download the design into PDF format and check if the actual physical components would fit onto our board.
All holes are in the right place and display and shift register fit perfectly. Header pins are standard ones, so there is no need to check the hole spacings. Let's have one final look at the design. I have circled few places on both top and bottom layers where the tracks are very close to each other, so I am doing some final cosmetic changes. While I was editing this video I came across information that the tracks should have smooth angles, uh, I should avoid 90 degrees angle, as they sometimes cause problems in PCB production. I will try to follow this rule in the future as it was too late to make the changes here. Ok, no more changes, I think we have our final design. What we need to do is to export it, but this time in Gerber format. When we do it, we need to zip all the files and we are ready to go to the manufacturer website. I will order the boards from Elecro, company in China that I found through AliExpress. The company provides an interactive form to order the PCB. We choose two layer PCB. I will update the board dimensions. Not sure what the different PCB designs are, but I'm sticking with the cheapest one. I will also change the color of the board to red. Finally, we have to upload the zip file with Gerber files. All other options remain unchanged. The minimal quantity uh, that we have to order is 5. And as you can see, it will cost me roughly $5 to get this design manufactured. Shipping is actually more expensive than the boards themselves. It will cost me another $8, but since I'm ordering few other designs as a bundle, it was not too bad. Let's add it to the cart and complete the order. The package is on its way from China. All I need now is patience, as it will probably take two weeks or more for it to arrive. I will sort the components onto it and see if it works. I can't wait to see the final result. In the meantime, this is all I have for you today. As always, like, share, subscribe and hopefully I will see you in my next video. Over and out.